Okay, so today we are working on the Subaru. If you're unfamiliar with this car, basically it's a 2000 Subaru Impreza, which they only came here with a 2.5 liter NA boxer engine. So we have a WRX swap 2 liter turbo engine in here and we rewired the car. We went through and changed a bunch of stuff and the car's kind of been like this which is about 90% finished for a while now. So basically we got this thing to kind of the point of driving and then that's kind of where it's been. There's been a bunch of stuff we need to finish up. And when I say complete, obviously no project car is ever complete, but complete for stage one of the build. They were kind of, you know, what we set out to do when we bought this car. When I got it, it was kind of in a state of disrepair and needed a lot of work done more than I thought. And we got most of that done, but there's still a bunch of little stuff that drives me crazy. And because of that, I haven't been driving the car much. So I wanted to get that taken care of. I went ahead and threw these hood shocks on the Miata. This is like a mod I've been meaning to do for a while. Finally got those on and I'm so excited to finally get rid of this thing. Oh, no more. No more rod with a rag tape to the top of it. This, I used to keep this in the wiper cow, so it would always be with the car. And now I got shocks. I'm hyped. Such a simple, cheap mod that's gonna make such a huge difference. I can finally throw this back in the scrap bin. Man, I've been craving this coffee from this local coffee place for a while now, and I finally caved and went and got some. So, here's what we got here. Uh, we have a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Mischel miscellaneous stuff. Uh, <laughs> door handle trim, uh, you know, buttons, this little thing, I forget where it goes. Uh, trim for the cluster, because I'm missing that. One of the big things is rear door harnesses. So, I bought this car with the swap already done, and what they had done is taken the WRX harness and put it throughout the entire car. So the whole car had a WRX chassis harness. The cluster didn't, it was a mess, it was a mess. Like half the stuff didn't work. So I got a GC chassis harness, sent it out to iWire, had them do a merge service on it. So it's basically the entire GC normal chassis harness throughout the car, and then it, it just converts it to work with the engine harness of the WRX, right? So the problem is when they did that WRX harness swap, they put in WRX door harnesses. So this is a door harness out of a WRX. So obviously my back windows and locks and all that stuff doesn't work. So I want to Fix that. So now we've got GC door harnesses to put in. Be really exciting. A uh, bunch of these clips. So I didn't have any of these. These go in the door sill trim. And I, I got a few and then now I've got, I should have enough to have all of them clipped in properly, which will be nice. Trunk carpet, this is kind of funny. So I forgot that I had trunk carpet and basically this guy found one of these at a junkyard and was parting it out more or less. So I was like, hey, like I want whatever trunk carpet you can fit in a box. And then when I was cleaning up my shelves and reorganizing, I found all this trunk carpet. So I got double trunk carpet, but that's okay. I should have all the pieces I need to fill out the trunk. And then another thing as far as the interior goes is this Nakamichi head unit. So this came, I had a A86 with an SR in it and this head unit came in it. And I, I don't know why, I just thought it was so cool and just really unique. So I, I've been saving this for years to find the right car to put it in. And I think this is the right car because it's got a, I'm pretty sure it's a red backlit, which will match the car and it's kind of era correct. And I, I don't know kind of nerd stuff but I think it's cool so anyway that's what we're starting on we're starting on the interior all these parts need to go in there so this is where these little clips go boom oh so nice to have those I think I have any back here yeah I don't this thing in the right spot all 
All right, this is another one of those things that made the car feel super janky. Snap in there. Bada boom, easy enough. Oh, and then this thing, boom. It's the little things. <laughs> We're still missing is the column cover. I need to hit up the first guy I bought parts from and see if he ever sent me out another one. Because I bought one, but it was the wrong one. It was just slightly different and wouldn't fit. Important to keep pretty much any hardware you can until it becomes excessive. Because you never know when you're gonna need a little screw like this. Does this seem like the right size? These are like perfect. The washer fits perfectly in the hole to spread out the load so it doesn't crack through. Uh, I think these screws are too small. No, oh, no, worked. Sweet! God, this has been like 10 minutes worth of work and it's so satisfying. It's like all the little stuff that drives you nuts. This too, we're still waiting on a replacement one of these. I love this compartment, but mine's a little broken. You can see there's uh, not much left of what should be the cover. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll move on to the trunk. All right, so I spread out the trunk carpet since I basically have double of just about everything so I can pick the nicest pieces to put in. Anyway, sorry, just all this stuff. Man, the weather, it's, it's starting to get nice. I don't want to jinx it by saying that, but it's probably only 85 degrees right now, 80, not super humid. Sky is nice and blue. We got freaking shop lights. Things are going good. <laughs> Two down, three to go. All right, well, I'll need to get some sort of like particle board to go down in here, but for now, this is better than a barren trunk with no carpet at all. All right, sweet. Well, the trunk's mostly back together. I need to wire these up. These are, I think like OEM speaker connections or something, I, I don't know. These just came in this harness. And these were jankily wired into the old harness, so it's kind of hard to tell, but either way, one more thing down. Oh, that was, that was aggressive, sorry about that. All right, so this is pretty cool. I didn't even realize this existed. It's a cup holder, which will be really nice to have. It screws in right here. So I'll have to open it to screw it in. I'm caught on something. Oh, I see. the long screwdriver. Oh, I can't believe I got that. That was so close to not going. Pretty big screw down here. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get anything in here. Oh, 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 almost lost it. All right, we got it. Got it to go in at least. Look at that. Now I got a working cup holder. Sick. Another missing thing is these change deals here. Is this the right way? Yeah, R. I guess it doesn't matter. Boom. One more thing down. One less thing to go. I need to find a non-broken center console too. It just doesn't latch. It's good otherwise, just doesn't latch. I think we've got a button to fill that spot. Boom, look at that, boys. Sweet, this is so nice, dude. Like I said, just all this little stuff, getting all this little stuff taken care of is so satisfying. Look at that cup holder. Sorry, hyped on the cup holder because there's one in here, right there. But obviously it's annoying because this thing, this part doesn't stay latched and then this part doesn't latch. And if you have a drink in here, you can't shut the thing, which is your armrest. So to have one up here, so sick. That's so, that's so JDM. It's even got the little drink 
logo engraved in it. Sweet, man, I'm really excited. I'm really happy about getting all this little stuff taken care of. Uh, what's next? I guess we can try to put the radio. I should have done that while I had all this apart. So, last thing we gotta do. Rear door harnesses, which I mean, by the fact of how minimal stuff there is here, that looks pretty easy. And the radio, which might be tricky just because I don't know if there's any provisions for me to mount this in there. So we'll do the door harnesses first. Oh, something kind of funny. The other day I went to the bank to put the money in. Oh, also I sold the uh, white truck. It is gone. It is actually in Texas with some, the people who've inspired me to buy it. Well, it's not them, but it's someone they know. So that's kind of funny. Uh, but anyway, I went to the bank to put the money in the bank and I opened this up to put some change in there out of my wallet and there was a freaking roach in there. Not the insect kind of roach, the uh, illicit kind of roach. And I was like, man, dude, this is why. It's, you gotta check vehicles over when you buy them and make sure you don't have anything in there you don't know about, you know? Okay, enough uh, procrastinating. Let's get this door panel off. Should be pretty easy. I think it's just a couple screws. Taking interior stuff apart when you're not sure how it comes apart is always so sketchy because there is stuff that just snaps together, so you're like, is this just tight or did I miss a screw? There we go, it did pop out. All right, well, bad news. Here is the old door harness connector. Obviously the old one's a little crushed, uh, but they're exactly the same. And this is the connector on the chassis harness. And I mean, it's kind of hard to tell in pictures, but obviously the male side is bigger than the female side, which is not how that's supposed to go. So yeah, okay, well, we got something else going on here. The only thing I can think is like maybe that's from an earlier, the rear harness I have is from like an earlier one and the plug's different. So I'll have to do some digging, but we're not getting these working today, but that's okay. Not like I really roll them down anyway, since the car has AC, but it would be nice. It would be nice to be able to do that and lock the doors. This will be a uh, resolution for another day. <laughs> that's good, at least that's done. Uh, or wait, no, that's not done. At least it's back together. I think that's what I meant. Okay, radio. I guess I should try to find an adapter harness for this so I don't have to cut this connector up. Eh, I'll never put a stock radio back in this thing anyway. Definitely super stoked that all we have left is the column cover in this thing and the interior is complete. I mean, it's mostly together and that's super exciting. I'm just, I can't believe this cup holder. That thing is sweet. Oh no, where's my, where's my little kick down? Like, oh, there it is. Okay, I got nervous for a second. That is gonna be so sweet. Yeah, anyway, really glad that we're almost done with the interior. Like, we are very, very close. All right, I'm gonna break out the old power probe to try to figure out what wire is what of my radio harness. That's power. That's our ground. All right, that's got, so which ones are switched and which ones are constant? Okay, so that's our constant. All right, so I found the diagram for this, so I know which wires are what. All right, now I'll hook the radio up and uh, see what happens. All right, I verified that the head unit works. We've got our wiring figured out. Now I'm just gonna start wiring it into these wires, which I know for the most part what they are. <laughs> okay, so I've got the radio power wired up, the power and the constant power and all that. And I've got the front speakers wired up because I was able to test those, but the rears aren't hooked up right now. So I need to go back there and hook those up so I can test these wires. The factory speaker connectors are just basically two female spades. So what I'm gonna do is crimp some male spades on these wires going to the speakers and we'll have a disconnectable semi not super jank setup. It's too windy for this. All right, well, I got the radio working, got all the speakers working, except this right rear one. So there's two plugs I mean, it seems like this is the plug, but there's not either of these colored wires up there. There's a similar color to this blue one. I think it's blue and yellow, though, instead of blue and red. Um, but anyway, I've tried every combination, and none of them work. So, I don't know. I guess I might have to give up on that one. I've checked under here. 
I can't find any more wires, so I'm just not 100% sure what the deal is, but check it out. This is a CD from when I had my A86, so like 2011. Talk about a throwback. Let's see what else is on here. Another Flux Pavilion song. Oh yeah. Lil Wayne. <laughs> Yellow Wolf. This the unexpected remix. I don't know what that one is. I don't remember that. Yellow card. This is a mix. Yeah. Drizzy baby. Drake. More Lil Wayne. Thrill of it remix. More Yellow Wolf. Oh man. Man, this is this is a trip down memory lane, I gotta tell you. Oh, this is one of my favorite Little Wayne songs, Trouble by Little Wayne. I only really listened to old Little Wayne stuff. Like it was old when I started listening to it. If you haven't heard this song, this is a good one. Too bad I can't show you because I'll get copyrighted. Another Little Wayne song. Lupe Fiasco. Oh, this is a good song, too. All right, well, that's enough of a trip down memory lane. I'm gonna start working on getting this thing installed in here. That was kind of cool, though. I, I, I didn't even realize there was a CD still in here, and I was messing around trying to figure out which speakers were working with just the static from the radio, and I was like, man, this kind of sucks. And I click CD, and there's a freaking CD. Well, that was actually pretty easy. The tabs popped in perfectly. Like I said, I've been saving this thing for a while. It's a really, really nice quality head unit. And I just feel like it's got that kind of classic JDM vibe. I, I don't know. It's very clean and classy in my opinion. I, I like it. It's kind of impractical because it's a CD player, but I do have a FM transmitter I can use with it. Anyway, I'm happy with it. Cool. Now that's done. I've got a couple little things to take care of on the exterior, and then we're going to go take this thing on some Florida back roads. I know that that sounds like a uh, oxymoron for it. It only doesn't have curvy back roads, but there is one nearby uh, that's pretty solid. It's nothing super special. It's not a mountain road, but it's got a lot of turns, a lot of really tight technical sections. So we're going to go hit that up here in a minute, but got to tidy up a couple little last things first. Okay, so one of the areas that needs addressing is... My fender liners that uh, are perpetually falling out. I'll uh, tuck them up in there and then they fall down. So, need to fix that. There's also a bolt missing down here that I'm gonna throw in. People who say you can't thread bolts in with an impact are wrong. <laughs> I never hand thread. I mean, unless it's real important, I don't hand thread anything anymore. All right, I'm gonna do the other side because it's missing the same bolt and then we'll try to attack this uh, fender liner situation. As much as I don't want to, I'm gonna have to jack this up and take the wheel off to get these fender liners back in. Just gotta find some plastic clips for all these spots where it clips in. All right, well, I got this fender liner in, enough plastic clips to hold it. I need to order like a multi-pack on Amazon. I know they have them, from just like a 500 piece variety pack because I never have these little plastic clips. All right, well, one side done at least. All right, both fender liners are tucked up and mounted correctly. That is nice. I always would mess with this one, be about to drive the car and I'm like, oh, let me get this in. Yeah, anyway. Glad I got that done. Uh, this side skirt thing, I don't know. It's still dangling. I guess it looks like it's missing a bracket down there. So I'll mess with that next. All right, sweet. So I figured out the side skirt. It basically, there's some bolts that hold it in and it had ripped through. So I just put some bigger washers on there and pretty much fixed that. Got my fender liners in. It's the little things. This has just been a whole video of the little things, but they're so satisfying. Like all these little things that bug you and you don't take the time to do them, and you finally do them, and you're like, oh wow, that was so easy, and it makes such a big difference. So, sweet, I guess let's take this thing for a rip.
right, well, we made it home. If I uh, had gotten home without incident, I was gonna tell you guys about how much fun I had and how I can't wait to do more mods to this thing. However, <laughs> I uh, did a pool pulling out onto the main road on the way here, probably like five miles away. Romped on it, and then it just made this god-awful noise. I'm pretty sure the clutch fork broke, but I'm not 100%. Let's see. Oh, I see it. Oh, I don't know. Can you press the clutch, Ben? Okay, let off. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's like the something broke. So that's kind of lame. Hopefully the trans is easy to get out. The engine wasn't too bad. So. No, I just definitely don't want to pull the engine again. Well, it was still fun. I had fun. It, it, the car rips and feels great. I really, like with some good tires and uh, like that math that I ordered, if that clears up the low RPM running issue, it just like stumbles a little bit until you get up, like up higher in the RPM range and into boost. Then it runs super clean. So as long as, once I figure that stuff out, like, and get some good tires on this thing, it's going to be amazing. But anyway, uh, yeah, we got something to fix now. So <laughs> I guess that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Maybe we'll be fixing this. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.